I guess it's just the Super Bowl post game. It's not Mark and Austin show. It's a Super Bowl post game. So we got Austin and Jared today. It was uh, a pretty good game. I thought we uh, we got a pretty entertaining game. The Chiefs ultimately pulled it out, but man. I thought it was a good game. I thought Brock Purdy did pretty good. I thought Christian McCafferty did good. The Chiefs, what makes them so great is that they can just... I mean, the game's on the line in overtime. If they don't score or at least get a field goal, it's over. <clears throat> First of all, Pat, Ma uh, Pat Mahomes doesn't throw an interception, which is... There's a lot of pressure on you to do that, but... What makes the Chiefs so great is they could just roll the ball down the field like that. And that's why they're so unstoppable. And that's why the Steelers can never beat them. That's why the the Bills can never beat them when it counts. I mean, they're just... I'm trying to think of... I'm trying to think of a team to compare them to. I mean, the Patriots did that a lot. They would just go down the field and score. I mean, the Steelers did that quite a bit, too. Um, Michael Jordan and the Bulls, when they were down. I mean, there were so many times where they were down in the fourth quarter. And they came back. So, they're just so unstoppable, man. And that, and that defense, the 49ers defense, is so good. So, I'm going to get you guys' thoughts first. But, uh... I don't know why, there, there's a few things that we could talk about here, but why they took the ball, why they took the ball at, at, at over on overtime. I, I don't know why they did that. Um, I, because I know if you score a touchdown, you win, but your strong suit is not your offense, it's your defense. So it puts the pressure on the Chiefs to score, but I guess they thought, you know, we don't want them to go down and score because then we don't even get shot. So, um, we'll talk about the commercials too. The commercials were, uh, I didn't see all of them. I recorded it. I recorded the game, so I'll watch it eventually. But some of the ones I saw were pretty good. Um, but again, the Super Bowl commercials, Anthony was saying it last week on our pregame show that. They're just not they're just not what they used to be, it doesn't seem like. I mean, they advertised a lot of movies. They had a lot of just regular commercials about that Jesus one was I as as uh as as a Catholic, um and I'm not like a diehard super religious person, but I think those Jesus commercials are kind of odd. Like I don't think the people that run them, I don't know if I don't <laughs> I don't know what their true intentions are, but I don't think you really have to advertise Jesus, but um, I thought that one was kind of odd. Um, I don't know. There was just there. There's always weird ones. The couch potato one I thought was pretty good. Um, I don't know what you guys thought, but uh, they actually advertised Hulu and Pluto TV that I saw with that. But yeah, they're just I don't know. But um, Jared, overall, what did you think about the game? And then I'll get uh. I mean, you and Austin can kind of just talk like you were. We we had an idea to record before the show because you get some good content there. And uh, that happens on every podcast. The best content is before the recording starts. But Austin and Jared, what did you guys think of the game? I'll start off. Um, I think that it was a solid A. I mean... 49ers are built as the best defense in the NFL. You know, Patrick Mahomes is revered as, you know, the golden boy of the post-Tom Brady era. And then you have the coaching, the legendary coaching of Kyle Shanahan and Andy Reid and everything that went in between it with all of the star playing, all the injuries that had taken place. But if you could tell me the name of that poor schmuck that got – he was running onto the dang field and hurt himself. And he was a oh. huge uh, piece for the defense for the 49ers, wasn't he? Yeah. Like, Greenlaw. Was Green yeah, Green Green yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, 
I, you can't make that up. You really do not want to make that stuff up. I mean, just kind of getting into the whole momentum and just your feet just give out on you and you just land wrong. I mean, th there's nothing worse in life than some freak accident like that happening. And it's just like little things like that. And of course, you know, had Mitchell uh, or uh, Kittle go down for a sack and came back into the game. Little things like that that build drama to it all. And listen, I'm not saying that we have to push the uh, the twi Twitter followers and Instagram people, but I'm sure that the Swifties were not really that happy with the game when Travis didn't give anything and Taylor did not have pretty much any shot in the first half. I mean, it was like one time in the first half. I thought that was like, man, we dropped almost immensely in ratings probably. I mean, it, it, it's little things like that that you now are in the back of your head. It's like everything piles into it. But of course, I'm a big uh, music person. And to have guys like people like Reba McIntyre do the national anthem to the perfection that she did. And then you have Usher with the halftime show. I'd give that about a 7, 7.5 out of 10. I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't the greatest or it wasn't bad, but it was kind of like, yeah, it was a Super Bowl halftime show. I mean, he danced like he always did. He sounded like he always did. Dude doesn't age. If we're going to give a performance on the thing, I mean, the dude's in his what, 40, 45-ish? I mean, the dude 40, still 45. looks like he's in his 20. Yeah, you see, he looks like he's 20. So, yeah, if that's the case, yeah, it, it was a great performance. But, yeah, the, the game itself was fantastic. You could not have scripted a better game ending for overtime. Like, you don't expect that to ever happen in the Super Bowl. And, yes, I thought that was the really big key moment for the whole thing was when Kyle just decided to take the ball first. And it was like, dude, you're going to give Patrick Mahomes, like, the opportunity to do something. It's kind of like a Tom Brady effect. When you are that elite and you are that known for what you do. But here was the difference between Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. If there is ever a time where you're going to see, like, third and five, third and seven, Patrick is going to find a way to get it with his legs. That's the thing. You you have to know this. Every time that guy is in open field, he will take off. And he's such a big, stocky guy for a quarterback. He's going to get it. And he knows it. Like, that's the huge difference between Tom Brady and Pat to me. Yes, Pat can easily throw it like Tom does, but he can run just as effectively as he does with his throwing. So if you take all of the scrambling away from Patrick Mahomes, I think this would have been a lopsided game. But he creates it. He's the one who does all that work. And, of course, Andy Reid is the coach he is. What Pat didn't do, Andy took over. It was absolutely some of the it's some of the best partnership you're ever going to see in the entire game of football. And, again, with one of the greatest plays I've ever seen, a great trick play to play at the Super Bowl was that Christian McCaffrey catch. That threw me completely. I almost went nuts in my living room when I saw – you know, Brock Purdy, give it to that one guy, heave it the opposite, opposite side of the field, and you saw him take off. It was such a trick, great play. I I was like, that's what I live for, for great moments like that, that you're always going to remember with every game, and that was that play. But Kansas City, I'm not saying that they are basically guaranteed to win or the Super Bowl every year, but now you got to start to think that it's like every other team now in the offseason – better be coming up with the ultimate game plan to get this team to stop being such a dynasty. <laughs> it's like, the, this is what it is right now. It's a dynasty. And yeah, the, they definitely have earned their right to say they are that because again, San Francisco's defense elite, absolutely the best. And they hung in there enough and they took advantage of what they were given. And so that was the result. It was, and it was a good one. I'm going to play that green law clip real quick this watch 57 dre greenlaw after the stop on the punt return yeah it's something i mean you don't i saw that live in the blue uh, it doesn't look pretty yeah yeah uh, suspected achilles dre um, greenlaw tear. Uh, i don't know if i don't know if it happened like return. when he first planted and just to drive to run He's onto the field the but he went down almost doesn't easily. look um, this. like right on the right on the edge of the sideline greenlaw um after the very stop freakish. Punt return. Um, definitely not something you you want to see. And he's now um, in the blue tent. Oh, that's kind of what pretty. I suspected right away. Just got just kind of how he went down and just kind of how area. how he just that's a huge out. He just went instincts. to run and fell down. Like it was, it was very very unusual. Um, uh, I know I know Debo got got hurt 
later in the game too. Yeah. I think he pulled. It looked like a low hamstring, maybe a knee. I don't know. Um, but he looked like he was running a long crossing route, and they just like immediately like went and like grabbed his leg when he went down. Um, you know, not something you want to see. You don't want to see the injuries uh, ever um, in any of this stuff. But yeah, I mean, overall, I think it was pretty fantastic game. Uh, you look at kind of we spoke before the show about kind of how everything was just in really good balance. Like the offenses and defenses complemented themselves flawlessly. The chiefs defense looked fantastic as well. Um, you know, uh, getting Brock Purdy off his spot, making him throw the ball uh, faster than, than perhaps he, he wanted to on, on a couple of those occasions. Good pressure both ways. Um, they were able to keep Mahomes in the pocket for the most part until late in plays. But again, that's that's credit to Pat Mahomes be able to have that aspect of his game to escape, um, to buy more time than really you can even defend for, uh, and then have opportunities either to run or you know uh, find somebody open after all this time. Um, that's hard for any defense. You're going to stress every defense that that way, um, and it becomes very very frustrating as well, just psychologically, to have to deal with that um, consistently uh, because. It, it's kind of one of those instances where you feel like you've done everything correct and it just wasn't good enough. Like you did everything perfect, but perfect wasn't good enough this time for whatever reason. And that's what elite quarterback play can do, especially mo uh, with a mobile quarterback that can buy extra time. Um, the one thing that I think probably could have been better for both teams is probably the run game. I think it's just more of a testament to defense, but um guys really couldn't get the run game going all that much um McCaffrey had a couple of couple of couple of plays here um bigger ones were kind of out of the, in the passing game and, and that sort of thing just because he's he's just a, a fantastic talent I mean there, there's not there's really not too many guys that can do all the things that he does from the return game from catching the ball versatility in, out of in and out of formation uh running the ball um you saw it on the trick play the burst is uh, impressive, uh, to say the least, uh, as he just outran pretty much everybody else on the field on that play. Um, really, nobody had an opportunity to, to stop him on that one. Um, I thought the I thought the blow up early from uh, Travis Kelsey to Andy Reid was um, was something. He's a he's a he's an emotional guy uh, as far as that goes, and it, it, it's probably it was probably something along the lines of like, hey. I'm open. <laughs> we got to get me the ball. Like, okay, I get it. I'm sure Andy Reid was well aware that his all-star tight end, future Hall of Famer, is probably a good football player and could probably help him win. Uh, I'm sure he was well aware of, of this at the time. Um, and I, I just thought it was kind of silly because he went to Andy. And he probably should have went to Pat, <laughs> to be honest, because it was like, Pat, you got to look for me because I'm open. <laughs> I've been open a couple of times here, you know? Um, so that was interesting, but uh, everything was kind of everything kind of cooled down after that. They they did get him the ball. He had nine catches for you know what, ninety plus yards or whatever. So he had a good night. Um, no touchdowns, but um, you know overall overall good night. Uh, you know, Moody. You know, I I think I've talked about this before on previous show towards the middle of the season, where uh, Jake Moody cost me a bet because uh, he missed a pretty short field goal, and uh, you know he might have really kind of cost the Niners by missing an extra point. So, you know, uh, how the, how the, uh, how the turntables, as they say, um, you know, it's one of those things where you got to do all the little things right. And as, as arbitrary and trivial as, Oh, he's a professional kicker. Of course, he's going to make the extra point. It's not a guarantee. There are no guarantees. Um, and he didn't make it. And, that is kind of the difference on why they went to overtime in the first place. So, you know, you kind of look at all this stuff and you got to put all the pieces together. It just goes to show you the margin of error is so razor thin. Uh, you know, we, we a couple of shout outs. Obviously, Donovan Smith wins another ring um, as part of the Chiefs. Um, one one with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, Jair Brown had an interception. I thought he played well overall. I know he got dinged up there for for a minute, but he came back. Um, looked like a like a stinger kind of thing. Um, so he had a good game too. Um, was pleased to see that. And uh, 
I had a great time watching the game because I didn't really have a horse in a race. I could just watch football and just kind of enjoy it. That was that was uh, not the worst thing in the world. Um, I will make a point uh, on the halftime show. I thought overall it was it was pretty good. Uh, I would say the first half definitely got carried by the back half. Uh, for me, it was when Ludacris came out with the full afro and gave me gave me some too fast, too furious vibes, and that brought me back some some positive nostalgia feelings. Um, and I, I enjoyed that very much. But uh, overall, great game. Um, you know, no doubt about it. It's a dynasty. Um, happy for the Chiefs. You know, uh, and for me personally, obviously being a, a big time Eagles fan. I was happy for Andy Reid, man, because the guy is one of the greatest coaches ever to ever coach. Um, his coaching tree is extensive. His his fingerprints um, and and his um, leadership and ability to cultivate culture and build a staff and have staff members move on, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, he is all over the NFL as far as his reach and his impact. So I'm happy for those guys. Happy for Andy Reid. Um, to get a to get another ring um, and definitely a dynasty. So the target is for sure on the back now, if it wasn't already, and everyone's going to be coming. Yeah, yeah. Overall, you know, you guys make some good points. I mean, the fact that, well, first of all, you got to give a lot of credit to the Chiefs. Obviously, they're an absolute dynasty. Andy Reid is. A huge reason why they're so good. Uh, Pat Mahomes, I don't think it's Pat Mahomes without Andy Reid. Now, like Tom Brady, I think if you, I don't know, I think if you take Pat Mahomes and you put him with another team, another coach, I don't know if he does as well. So I think he benefits greatly from having Andy Reid as a coach. He doesn't have a ton of weapons. I mean, like Tom Brady, he doesn't have a ton of weapons. I mean, he has that Rasheed Rice. I believe he's a rookie. He's an absolute freak. Um, and then Kadarius Tony, he's kind of like Antonio Brown. He's just kind of lost his mind. Um, and he's kind of got that serial killer look. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen his face, but he just, he looks crazy. Um, but apparently he just, he really fell off. And he was a weapon. I believe last year he caught a touchdown in the Super Bowl. Or he was a big factor in the Super Bowl. Uh, so... I don't know if you saw my cousin sent me this clip. It was, I think it was 132 left in the fourth quarter. And it was first and 10. Mahomes ran for two yards to make it second and eight. And then they changed the, t the thing on the TV to first and 10 again. Did you see that? I did. I did see that. I thought that was really weird. Did you see that, Austin? Uh, I think that's, I think guys, I think that happened when I was, when I stepped away for a moment. I don't, I don't expressly, you can say, you can send me it though. Yeah. Uh, he said, it he too, said this though. was, this was late in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Yeah. Right at the end. Okay. Yeah. I remember actually going, like I watched it live and I remember seeing Mahomes dive under and it was like, so it's second and whatever. And then they put the camera back on the field and it shows that it's first and 10 on like the 36 or something. I'm like, wait, wh what play did they do that? I, they got that first down. I didn't even see it. So yeah, I, it was definitely weird. So what you're saying is the fix was in. That's what you're telling me. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I'm trying to, fuck. I hate that you can't play stuff. Um, yeah, they will, the, it, the, but I'm, they will, I'm, re I'm looking it, at it right now. Um, <laughs> You can just you can just, you can just send it to me personally. He ran for two. He ran for two yards, and then he, and then he's running around. It says second down, and then they put the Super Bowl logo. And now it's first and ten again. So, I don't know. That that's very. I I presume there was no explanation. It's just very odd. Yeah, I heard no commentating. I heard nothing brought up by the booth or no one, and they just kept on going. So it was the script writers. I, I don't know, man. Um, but I will say overall, I think the game was good. It was pretty neutral. I didn't really see any like out of. 
I, you know, out of this world calls against either team. I we got now that they could have the 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 only controversial play really that I remember is when you uh, Kyle Yuschek caught that ball and then he's falling out of bounds and he like fumbled it. Um, they were trying mm. to call that incomplete. I'm glad they didn't because I don't think it was. But no. Uh, and I, I placed a couple bets. Um, nothing too crazy, but didn't hit any of them because the touchdown score props, they just weren't there. Um, you know, I mean, you had, I think it was me, Cole Hardman, uh, who was the guy, uh, Pacheco, no, not Pacheco. Who was the guy that caught it at the end? Oh, number two. Uh, he was like, yeah, he was, I mean, he wasn't like, he's not like some well known guy really. I don't think. Was it Hardman that got the game winning touchdown? Was uh, it? Let me let me see here. Miko Hardman, and then let me see eleven Chiefs. Mark. Okay, so I think it's Valdez Scantling, and then Miko Hardman. Yeah, Hardman was yeah. the was the was the the winner in overtime. Yeah, yeah and then. And then the Niners had uh, who? Uh, McCaffrey, McCaffrey. And who else? Jennings. 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 Yep. Okay. McCaffrey, and then, Jennings. And then did, okay, so 17, 20, 20 how, how many touchdowns did the uh, Chiefs have? Have two. Two, I think. Okay. Ross for field goals. Really? Two touchdowns, one extra or one missed extra point, yeah. uh, and then three. I'll field tell you this: true. that is so crazy, though, that Jake Moody set the the Super Bowl record at fifty five, and then uh, Butker broke it at fifty seven. That's so crazy to know that it was those two t- field goals that are the longest in the history yeah. of the game. It was That's just so twice. bizarre. Yeah, You'd think had... it'd be sixty sixty five or something yeah. like that. <laughs> but I, I had Ayuk and. Uh... Kelsey scoring, you know, I had uh, Pacheco over 60 yards, you know, Chiefs money line. Um, now, I, I, in the pregame show, I did pick the Niners. Um, I, that was one bet I had. But I just, you know, ultimately I'm like, there's just no way the, Nin- the, Niner, or the Chiefs don't win. I mean, they're the Chiefs, you know, um, as good as the Niners are. So, and I had the under, but, yeah, like, nothing hit. Well, the under hit. Chiefs money line hit, but I, they were parlay, so nothing really hit. But that was one thing about the game. I think a lot of people were disappointed with was there was not a lot of scoring from the best players, uh, and that you know that's the thing about score props, man. You just you just never know. Last the Super Bowl last year, I had the over fifty three and a half. I think it ended up fifty four. Chiefs minus one and a half. They won by what like three. I had. Kelsey and AJ Brown scoring, and that's a four leg parlay right there. That was plus like two thousand or something like that. So um, I think Austin remembers when I did that. So one one big on that one, you know. But that's the thing about score props; you just never know. But uh, overall, I thought it was a good game. I, I don't know why the Niners. I, I I don't know why the Niners took the ball. First of all, I heard on a podcast this morning that. None of them knew the Super Bowl overtime rules that apparently they thought it could end in a tie. Like, no one knew that. That's the thing about the whole tying thing in the NFL. I don't get it why they do it in the regular season, but not in the playoffs. If you're going to, why not have the same rules for both? Don't let a game end in a tie. You just, that's just so stupid. It used, not, it used to not be that way. But. And, and then and then obviously in the Super Bowl you can't end in a tie, so it's like yeah apparently I don't yeah. um I I don't really feel too bad for them if they didn't know that that yeah, seems like I, I just don't a, either a, but it's that, like, that's something that just doesn't that, I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense yeah, just, for that to even even be a thing but yeah that's what I heard from a podcast this morning and then you know you had um you had. Kelsey attacking his coach and they showed Taylor. So they had bets on the over under how many times they'd show Taylor Swift. 
But uh, I even the Taylor Swift stuff I thought was pretty neutral, which was pretty nice. Um, now, if there is a script, they kept it neutral to, uh, I think, uh, kind of demolish any beliefs that there was a script. Um, I don't really believe there was, but uh, yeah, it was just, overall, it was a pretty good game. I mean, it was back and forth. It started out slow for the Chiefs, and then they came back, of course. I mean, I kind of figured they would. But um, I I just I thought Purdy did good. I think Purdy would have had a decent shot of being the MVP if he if they won. Um, but uh, you think it would have been McCaff McCaffrey, Jared? Okay. So, yeah, just, man. You know, the, so the thing about the Niners is they scored and then they gave, how much time was left? A minute? And they went down and got a field goal to give it to, to get it to overtime. And it's like, I don't know. If you're the Niners, I, you, you want to kill more time, but they just, they had the, they had the game in their hands and they kind of just let it slip through. So, uh, but yeah, overall. I mean, you had McCaffrey just lighten it up. I thought Brock Purdy did really good. I thought he looked really good. He could have won that game. Um, to be the last pick in the draft two years ago and then win a Super Bowl, that, that would that would have been absolutely insane. And he didn't lose them that game. I mean, they just – it's the Chiefs, you know. The Chiefs just – they're just that team, and that's what they do. But um, – That's you, like uh... – that's like that's like one of the, those old things that you say. It's like, well, did did this team lose the game or did the other team win? Now, of course, both are true, but the Chiefs <laughs> won the game. It's not like the Niners totally blew it. Like they, right. they didn't they didn't get the doors blown off. Like yeah. that was a that was an incredible game. And it was like the margins were so tiny. It's like sometimes you can do all the right thing. I say this all the time in tennis. Sometimes you you, you know you do. You do everything right. You approach well. You you come in. You take away space. The other person just makes a great. They just hit a great shot, and it, it's just too good. What do you do? You clap. And you say too good. <laughs> it's too good, man. Like you know, I that that's all it is. Um, and that that's what you have to do for for the Chiefs. They were just too good. They were too good yesterday. Um, they weren't so much better. Just a little bit. Just a little tiny bit. That's and that's the difference. You know, I, I yeah. still love what, what San Francisco has going on. Um, you know, I, I think folks, as time goes here, they're going to stop crapping on Brock Purdy so much. He's a good player. Like, he's a good yeah. player. Like, let's just call – let's call it what it is. Yeah. He's a good quarterback. He had um, – does Absolutely. Austin, he had does, a, what, second overall pick in front of him? Yeah, sure. It, it's just it's – it's just on one the of – the, it's just one of those things where you look at everything and you're like, the guy can play football. The guy can play quarterback. Like he's not bad at playing. Like he's a good player. So I, I don't understand like the whole, I, you know, and everyone does it. And like, you've done it a little bit. Usually we're a bit more clear. Cause we, we kind of really, we're pretty careful with our words, but like, the whole, he's a game manager. It just feels like this huge slight, like, Every quarterback has to be a game manager. Like you ha that is a prerequisite on being a quarterback. Why is that the case, you might ask? Because some days, even Patrick Mahomes, he's less Patrick Mahomian on some days than others. And you gotta manage the game. That's why you have a team. If you could just go out there and do it yourself, that's different. That's why you have a team. You lean on your guys when maybe you don't have your best stuff. Not everyone has their fastball all the time. Um, and that's where you got to you gotta delegate things to the team. And you got to be a little bit more of a game manager, a little bit more play the odds, whatever. You just, maybe you're just having an off day. Happens to everybody is what it is. Um, so yeah. I, I just think it it's kind of lazy to be like, well, Brock Purdy's not good because he's just a game manager. It's like, no, it's I really thought, la lazy yeah. thinking. I, I thought he did really good. I mean, he was firing the ball in there. He threw threw a touchdown. Well, technically he threw two, but um I mean he was he fired that ball in there to uh uh who what's his name again? 
the number 15 for the Niners, the guy that caught the touchdown? Parkman or Hardman? For the Niners. Um, oh, for the Niners. Uh, Jennings. Jennings, yeah. Jennings, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I thought he did good. I thought he did good. Um, but, you know, he he's definitely not a game manager like Austin said. He, well, he is, but he's 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 more than that. Um, he did good. I, I was impressed by his play. I mean, he easily could have won that game, I think. The fact that they had the game in their hands at the end, they could have run the clock down. You know, that's coaching. You got a, you got the best running back in football, probably. You got this kid who's playing really well. Um, you got enough weapons on the line. You got a great O-line, and you can't run the clock down? You, you give Pat Mahomes time to go back down? I mean, Pat Mahomes is... He's, he's, he's basically the Michael Jordan of our sport right now, of football. He, he, he can just... He can do anything. Um... That guy could have ten players on offense and still probably get down and score. So he is he's that good. He's he's that good. So uh You know, jump off your point, Mark. Uh now we do have to kind of put this in the perspective of now the season's over, we're officially in the off season, and how it works is with the Super Bowl, whoever won is in first. They're the ones who are the top tier and whoever lost and this is going to sound ridiculous, but this is true. They're the last place team in the entire NFL. You got to look at it like that. You lost. So you therefore are not, if you're not first, you're last. That is what has always been said, Ricky Bobby. It's just <clears throat> how that works. Yeah. And that's the thing about this game that defines your entire identity. Like, you know that you are doing what you're doing as Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and Chiefs. You guys are literally the Chiefs. You are the supreme commanders right now of the sport. You are looked at as the guys that know what they're doing at all times. And as elite as the defense for the 49ers are, no matter how far Brock Purdy has come, no matter what they did, everything right, whatever, it's like now you are at the bottom tier. And you got to now prove yourselves once again. That's what makes the next season more and more interesting. Because now you're asking yourself... Are the 49ers going to be able to stay where they're at with offseason, with drafting, with what comes next with player injury and or acquiring? Like, all these things have to then come into your mind as an entire organization where it's like, all right, we got to tweak this. We got to, like, we see the whole scope of things. It's like, what screw is loose? What What is it hanging right? It's like, we got to adjust this and here and that. Everything right there is right there in front of you. It's just now, can an organization like San Francisco know what they need to tweak? That way they can get back to where they were at and even be better. That's the thing about this game. When you're the winner, it's like you have no problems. When you're the loser, you have all the problems in the world. Because, again, yeah. you got to know how to get back there. And, and, and you look yeah. at every other team that was so close – that they could like the lions just collapsed. It was one of the most devastating things. I'm not saying that I was rooting for them completely, but it was that thing where if it was Detroit versus Kansas city, it would have been the feel good story of the year. Everyone would have watched that super bowl thinking that there would be no loser. Truly, truly again, because we were all thinking like the underdogs ultimately that never won a super bowl with the chiefs that, you know, are expected to win a super bowl. But the narrow, the narrative was that Brock Purdy is not an elite quarterback. So how could he possibly be able to dethrone the great Patrick Mahomes? And you know what? He looked pretty darn good against Patrick Mahomes. Head to head, that was a darn, darn good boxing match if I've ever seen between two quarterbacks. He really knew how to stick and jab with the best. Yeah. So again, it's these little stories that it's like, all right, now next season, you're looking as to what it is going to take for you to be like the Chiefs or not to stay the worst and lose again. Like, yeah. it's just where it all comes from. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a good point, Jared. Um, it, it's, it's, that's the thing, like, we'll go on to the next subject here, but uh, that's the thing about the Niners is they shown them on the sideline, disappointed, looked like Joey or Nick Bosa was crying. Uh, I think McCaffrey was crying. Uh, they all know how hard it is to get there. And how they could never, ever go back. Uh, that's the thing about the Steelers is... And I don't know what their mindset was going into that Super Bowl that they lost to the Packers. I think a lot of them thought, 
we're a dynasty. We're the best team. We're going to win four or five Super Bowls. This is just another game against a sixth seed. There's no way we lose this game. Um, and they lost. And it, it, it still sucks. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, you never get over, like, dude, it, it, you never get over, like, the death of a close family member. Uh, I'm still not over that Super Bowl loss. It still hurts that we lost because you just, as time went on, you're like, man, we're not going back there for a while. Um, we kind of came close, but man, and this team now, we're, we're God, we, we, I don't know when we're going back to the Super Bowl. This franchise is just an absolute joke. Um, and I think they make, they have to make a change of coach. Really, they have to. I mean, they're talking about Ryan Tannehill coming in. Holy shit. Dude, are you kidding me right now? D- th- th- He's 35. Yeah, <laughs> just just right on the whiteboard in the locker room, we're never going to a Super Bowl with this team. Just write that on the sur- just write, write that on the whiteboard. We don't want to win a Super Bowl. We just want to be average and suck and draft in the mid round, mid of the middle of the first round and Mike Tom was the greatest and the same song and dance every year, but Um, But that's another thing why the Super Bowl, I think, is such an important game to watch because, again, these are the best of the best for the reason. It's like you're watching two teams that won it that badly, and they proved that. And now you look at all the entire scope of the NFL, and you're just looking and going, all right, that team is around C, C plus. Like, that team, you know, it's B. It's B. It's I, I respect you, but, you know, you're not A material just yet. You know, like, all the different grades, and it's like, you know you're tanking because you want good draft picks because you know yeah. you're not ready to do this just yet. There are so many different variances in terms of the sport of football where it's, that's what makes it such a great sport. Any sport can do that, but something about the NFL, it's just a lot of fun to do it with every team from the – pitiful Arizona Cardinals to the elite of the Chiefs it's just like everyone in between you know you're wondering you know I can be a good student I can put myself through the test but it's just at the same time how much study time do you really devote yourself to how much do you want that grade how badly do you want that a and it just seems like the Chiefs they they bring in the a students every time and then 49ers it's like it's you wouldn't think that Brock Purdy would be the last draft. Like you think, okay, this guy's just getting it on merit because he's just a part of the draft. He's put his work in. He's literally giving you a plus plus effort. So therefore at least he looks like a B B plus quarterback. So you got to give you props to how much work you're going to put in for it. But yeah, the Steelers um, and who knows about the Eagles Austin, but it's just like, you're looking at the entire state and it's just like, I, I look at our divisions and it's just, between the Bengals and the Ravens and the Cowboys and the Commanders. Listen, you can say what you want about the Commanders, but yeah, they're they're right now to me making pretty decent uh, decisions yeah. so far. Yeah, and now they're thinking about bringing in a rookie quarterback. That's like, who knows? You never know if the foundation can be built that quick. Yeah, but the, it's yeah. true about the whole thing. The, the Steelers are unfortunately, I don't think they're they're going to change until they make changes and. Commanders got a new co- some new coaches. Um, the uh, you know the Bengals they flipped it around in two years too. I mean they were the first pick, and then they were in the Super Bowl. Um, and a final point too is, uh, and Austin you can speak too, but uh, imagine if the Niners had like Ben Roethlisberger or Pat Mahomes or. Uh, even Russell Wilson, like, imagine if they had, like, a legit quarterback. They've had Trey Lance, complete bust. They've had Jimmy G, and they've had Brock Purdy. Imagine if they had, like, a a legit quarterback, how good they would be. They would have so many rings right now, because that roster is just so insanely talented. I mean, just imagine if they had, like, a Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, that would be they. They wouldn't. They would never lose. You know. So they've had quarterback issues for a long time. Because I mean, let's be honest. You could do better than Brock Purdy. You know. So yeah, I mean, better quarterbacks for sure exist. I think. I think they were really high on Garoppolo. Um, it just kind of sucks that the guy got hurt all the time. Like a he lot. Just, he just couldn't stay healthy at all. Um, like, like I think he had a lot of talent. I think he he 
proved that he could be a pretty good quarterback. But you got to be able to play. Like, he can't be hurt all the time, unfortunately. Um, obviously, you don't ever want to, like, knock somebody from get, for getting hurt. But, like, that's a that's a statistical distribution. Some people are just a little more, what you would say, fragile than other people. They're just a bit more injury prone. They're just not as durable um, for whatever reason. Probably genetics. Probably has – it's not – within his control at all, really. Um, but the one, the one thing I was going to say is that was a fantastic quote that I think you need to clip out uh, for sure and put that in there because that was some next level insight about the Steelers that you didn't know if they were going to change until they made changes. We're going to need to clip that, get it in there because that is, excuse me, next level. Love yeah, it. They're not going to change. Well, it doesn't seem it doesn't seem the case. Uh, I do I do remember another big thing in coaching, which isn't always true, but is usually probably a, a pretty fair assessment of things. You're never as good as you think you are, and you're also never as bad as you thought you were either. Um, yeah. Usually, there's some things that you can kind of build off of all the time, unless something is just a total dumpster fire. Um, it's one of those things where, like, in, in this particular case with the Steelers, um, can they just get a couple of drafts right? Yeah. Like, if, if you just – if you are just – even one draft, like, yeah. one draft could totally change the complexion. If you just hit on an extra guy or two that you didn't really – you were kind of unsure, and it just works out. Like, you know, maybe you get a guy that – you know, maybe you get a, a, a Jair Brown type player in the third round who's starter quality, yeah. you know, uh, plus maybe you get an offensive playmaker. Uh, obviously, we all know the deficiency at quarterback. We know that that's a big part of the issue, of course. Um, or you look at the Eagles, like they totally revamped their entire coaching staff, like, yep. you know, um, which I think was warranted. Um, obviously, you know, it, talked about it. Great coaches know when to press the right buttons and pull the right levers at the right time. And down the stretch, they couldn't they couldn't hit water with a play call if they fell out of a boat. Uh, I mean, it was horrible. They couldn't do anything. So, you know, it, it's just it's one of those things where even if you have the same boat, if you get a different captain, sometimes it just looks different. That's like yeah. that's like saying you know I, you have somebody driving their their Toyota to work, but you give it. You know, you give that car to uh, Jimmy Johnston, the the NASCAR former NASCAR driver. Uh, it's just gonna look different when he's driving it. You know, like he's just gonna drive it a lot better than you. Why? Because he's just a way better driver than you. So, it, it, you know, it always depends. Sometimes you don't need a, a total rebuild. Sometimes you just need a different a different steward of of the ship. So we'll see. It'll be very interesting off season. Obviously, the the draft coming up relatively um, in relatively short order. Um, that'll be entertaining to see what, what what these teams are able to do. But but overall, uh, I thought it was a, a good week for football. Uh, you know, I, I think everybody got their money's worth uh, uh, for the Super Bowl, which I which I thought was good. And um, yeah, can't really can't complain.